Hello and welcome anybody, everybody, but probably nobody. This is Thor W here to bring you a little bit of a tutorial on the current state of the Dungeon Fighter Online global release. And this is going to be a tutorial on how to tackle the late game dungeons as a monk player, because I have a late game monk. So first off, we're going to go over the skills that I think are currently the best skills to, to go to the, the late game dungeons with monk. And then we'll do one of the dungeons. So. Starting off right away, we've got... <clears throat> I've got everything tallied out already. I've got zero SP, so I've got everything spent, and this is a level 70 character. I am maxed out. So, let's jump right into it. First off, uh, Smasher. This is our grab. We don't need to put any points into it. This is a bit of a, uh, a preference thing. It's not going to do a whole lot of extra damage if you put points into it, but it can help if you want to. Giant Weapon Launcher, we throw our weapon into the ground. Why would we ever level this? Come on now, don't be silly. Strike, we max this out. Max Strike out immediately. The buffs that you get from this, the the attack, the hit rate, everything that you get from this is everything that Monk wants. Everything Monk wants. You definitely want to try and max out Strike as soon as possible. It's going to help you a lot in those dungeons. All right, so Slow Heal, this is, this is a point that, you know, people... Ba bounce back and forth between do I want this slow heal leveled up do I want it to be low leveled what I've got it at I got it at 22 why is it at 22 it's leftover points that's where I've got it at I put my points in the stuff that I prioritize first and then I put everything else in slow heal uh, for where I think I need it to be lucky straight punch not the most useful thing in the world it's okay it's it's a little bit of super armor it's a straight punch forward, but it's not great for the for PvE. It's not even the... It's alright for PvP, but it's not great to level up. Cure! You're gonna want a few levels in this. Let me tell you, you're gonna want at least about about level 6 where I've got it. That's really good. That's gonna remove a lot of bleed effects, a lot of poison effects, and that those do a lot of damage in the late game dungeons. Trust me, guys. Second uppercut, we're not even gonna touch that. Don't even think about it. Uh, that's useless as all hell for PvE. You don't want to bounce your opponents really high into the air for PvE. It just, it's not what you're going for. Furious Grab, we're a monk. We're not, we're not an Avenger. Why would we level this? Come on, don't be silly, guys. Will Driver, I personally think that every monk should always uh, max this out. The buff you get from having the Will Driver down, the fact that you can uh, place it wherever you want, especially in a PvE dungeon, and use it as you like in a PvE setting, means that you should always have this maxed. You should even take some TP upgrades into it here and there. We'll get into the TP stuff later. So obviously you're going to have your Sway, and you're going to have your Duck. I mean, uh, I mean, those are the premier monk skills right there, guys. You gotta have the Sway, you gotta have the Duck. Wisdom Blessing, I don't like it that much. I mean, it increases magical attack and intelligence, and we're not really doing that with Monk. I mean, if we're going to max out Furious Grab and Tornado, maybe? Let's max out Furious Grab, yeah. Phoenix Hammer, we're not getting that. We plunge our weapon into the ground, never to be seen again. Why would we take that? Painful Rapture. Now this is where the build gets a little bit different from what you might see of older videos, even more current videos of other people playing. I currently have this maxed out. Now, is it good to have this maxed out? No, not at all. However, right now in the state of Dungeon Fighter Global, there's a lot of items that aren't in the game. There's a lot of really, really good high tier items we have no access to. And that means that we have bigger mana issues than the people that you're gonna see on Chinese DNF or Korean DNF, whatever bigger mana issues, we have lower skill level, lower skill cap. We have we have just a lot more problems that we have to deal with. And how do we deal with that? Painful Rapture is a very good way to deal with that. If you're not if you don't want to spend a bunch of items healing your mana all the time, regenerating, if you can, go for it. If you can't, Painful Rapture, level it up a little bit. Doesn't have to be maxed, but you can max it if you want to. At max level, uh for me it's taking down it takes 3138, 43138, and that's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's a lot of mana that's going to let you spam a few skip spills. I can't stress enough the, the l level of equipment difference that you're going to see between us and KDNF or CDNF. DFO, DFO Global is lacking equipment. You need to make up for that right now with something like Painful Rapture. 
Trust me on this, guys. Technical Mastery, we're gonna max that out. That's way too good. Combat Mastery, we're gonna max that out. That's way too good. Why would we not max those out? That's really good to have those maxed out. Divine Crush, just put one in. A little bit of utility. A, a little bit of a love tap on the ground for your opponents. Ducking Uppercut, only one point. Now, in PvP, where you want to juggle opponents and throw them up in the air, you're going to level that a little bit more, but this is PvE guide. Ducking Straight Punch, we're going to max that out. That's a lot of damage. That's some AoE coming into our opponents. Ducking Body Blow, max that out. Definitely max that out. Why do we max that out? Stun. Stun, 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 stun. When you're facing those big bosses and they've got super armor and they've got grabs and they got stuff like that, stun them with this. Punch them right in the gut, stun them, and then lay into them. Rising Emblem again. We're not we're not an intelligence person. Quick parry, max that out. Definitely. This gives you a much larger evasion chance. It's gonna save your life here and there. Very useful. Exquisite combo. This is your big, heavy-hitting, low-cooldown spell. You're, you're gonna want to spam this often. You need to max this out. This is this is your your big damage. Exquisite combo is more than likely going to do more damage throughout the, the duration of the dungeon than any other skill that you have as a monk player for PvE. So you max that out. Sidewind, you only need one level on that. This is PvE. Don't worry about it. One level, just a little poke. Uh, it pulls pulls enemies towards you for uh, combos as well. It's useful. Sacred Counter. I like having one point in this. Uh, it can help out here and there against certain things, get you out of a tough situation. Um, much more useful in PvP, but it has its moments in PvE, that's for sure. Chopping Hammer. Max this out as well. This is, a this is again, another duck slash sway move. Now, the reason you max this out, you get a big AoE shockwave and a lot of damage out of this, so it helps a lot with those grouped up enemies. It's going to help clear out your PvE run a lot faster. Twister of Judgment, max that out. That's a lot of damage. Sometimes you're going to have a situation where you're you're in a bad spot and you want to run away from your opponent. Uh, you want to run away from the mob or something like that, but you need to be doing damage because the boss is regenerating throughout the Twister. The Twister is going to help you a lot with that. Machine Gun Jab, we're going to max that out. That's a lot of damage. Good AoE, a bunch of hits. It can it can crit constantly. It's really nice. Uh, it helps combo a lot. All good. Shadow Clone. Oh, you better believe we're maxing that out. Shadow Clone, this is... This is just amazing. It's such a good spell. It gives you an immediate Shadow Boxer behind you, and you can even put TP to get more, and it's going to let you extend combos infinitely. It's going to let you do... A, a very high damage increase with this. You need to max that out. Heavenly Combo. Some people like this more than I do. I think it's okay. It's decent. I just don't have a lot of levels into it. I, I've only got it at one. It's a little bit of a utility here and there. It's good here and there. Oh yeah, Double Shadow. You want that passive. Obviously. Obviously you want that passive. Shadow Clone is so good. You want to get more of it. Hurricane and Roll, the Dempsey Roll, baby! Max this out. That is so good for PvE. You draw all the mobs in, you pull them all together, and then you whip their ass. It's so good. You guys definitely want to max this out. Dry Out, you gotta, you want to max this out. The big reason is that it allows you to cancel your skills faster. It lowers the cooldown, lowers the MP consumption rate. It's really nice. I got Big Bang Punch maxed. I actually don't use it as much as I should. But it's very powerful. It's very, very strong. It's uh, really good when you can group up enemies and you can guarantee the last punch. That's the big thing. You can't always guarantee the last punch from it. So you're gonna need to you're gonna need to make sure you've got some setup. A stunned enemy, something like that. Really good for the big bang punch. And then Gatling Punch. This skill's really, really strong. It's really, really good. You can combo into it really easily and extend combos with it. It's very powerful. Get that up. And I got a point in Demolition Punch as well. This is really nice. You can you can duck and sway. You can use this really quickly. It uh, It's good for the combos. It's a really nice move. Alright, so now that we've got the basic SP out... Oh, I'm sorry. Focus Critical! <laughs> I almost missed you there, little guy! Uh, obviously, you get your, get your quick rebound, guys. You know you want to. You know you need it. It's too good. It got the back stat. That's nice. Focus, physical, critical. I almost forgot about that. You want to max that out. You're doing 
basically nothing but physical damage with Monk, so the more critical hits you get, the better. And you can even get some focus rear attack in there. Uh, sometimes you want to get more, sometimes you want to get less. Depends on what you're what you're tackling with the uh, the dungeon, what you're going to be doing in there. So let's take a look at the TP skills I got. I got nothing in the top bar. Absolutely nothing in the top bar. Top bar, you can go go kiss your own butt. Wheel driver upgrade, maxing this out. It uh, extends the range of it. It gives you a little bit of leniency when you step out of the wheel driver area, so it works better. And it buffs it even more. It's really nice. It's really good. Uh, we've got exquisite combo upgrade. Getting that up. More damage out of your exquisite combo. Like I said before, this thing does so much damage. You want to be buffing that. You want to be getting that out. It's really good. Twister of Judgment. This, is, this creates a chance of summoning a second Twister out of the Twister of Judgment, so I've got some points in this. I really like Twister of Judgment personally. I think it's great for PvE, so I definitely put this in. And Hurricane and Roll, this increases the pool speed, the range, the attack, everything about Hurricane and Roll, and that's a really, really strong skill for PvE. So now that we've got the basics out of the way, I even have a TP pool and I don't have... You know what, let's throw that machine gun jab just because I'm here. Oh, I can't. Oh, I look like an idiot now. Mm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot. It's two. It's two on the tier two stuff. That's why I didn't have that. Anyway. Now that we've got the basic theory behind the skills and basic skill levels. And what we want to max and stuff. Let's go see this this build put into practice. And go go, I'm going to go do what is currently the latest game run available. For the most part at least. We're going to jump over here into Pursue the Express Train, and we're going to go do that. So, th this particular dungeon starts off with a minigame. We're going to have to clear all these, as many of these guys as possible, try and get the Kuang Ching, and dodge any warnings. And we want to get through this minigame, because you get a buff if you actually get through the entirety of the minigame. So, hopefully, I won't be dumb like I usually am, <laughs> and I won't accidentally die, but you know, it's always possible. We are in a speedboat, and there's a bunch of sea mines out there. Look at that, they're trying to kill us. We don't want to die to that. So as per usual, you know, just try not to run into the mines, try not to run into any cardboard boxes if any of those come out, which they may or may not. After all, this is uh, always a little bit random about what will and will not spawn in this particular minigame. But as it stands, it looks like it's going to be fairly standard. And we got through it nice and easily. Alright, so we're about to jump into the actual dungeon here. So the first things first, we're going to throw our wheel driver down. We're going to get our strike out. And we're going to machine gun jab to pull them in, and we've got an NPC here. And sure, it looks like she's going to help a lot, but trust me, she's not going to be here for for very long once we get to the boss fight. And that's the, that's the tough part. Okay, so I know that there's a boss level creature here. There's a scar belly here. Oh wow, she's got him. So that's why I threw out the Twister immediately. Anytime that you know there's going to be boss level creatures there, that's when you're going to start using your cube skills, because... Like this guy. Hi there, Razor Tooth. How you doing? So for Razor Tooth, I always like to pop Shadow Clone. And then everything, because this guy's really tough. So it's really good to uh, just not be stingy about your uh, your cubes against uh, the against the bosses. And you'll be able to clear stuff really easily. And we saw a use of my, uh, we saw a use of, uh, Cure earlier because I got, I got bled by one of the, uh, crocodiles. And as you can see, it took off, it took off the bleed effect immediately. Very useful in that regard. So as you can see, we still have a fairly large amount of mana. But the more we spam, the more we're going to spend, obviously. And we want to have a, we want to have almost full mana to face the bosses. After all, the bosses are tough. Up oh, there he is. We're going to pop Shadow Clone for this dude as well. Oh, he got out. Sometimes that happens. Up, oh, 
He cloned again. But he's stuck on her now. Easy peasy. Oh, wait. <laughs> that was weird. He got out, like, right at the very end of that. So now you look at our mana, and we're pretty low. So let's go ahead and we'll pop a Painful Raptor. We'll pop a heal. Heal gets two-thirds of what we spend for Painful Raptor. And then there's a cutscene there, but I just skip it. I always do. So this guy, this guy's a jerk. These bosses are jerks, so we're going to pop everything we can on them. And we're going to Aura Aura our way to victory. And surprisingly enough, our NPC survived. How nice. <laughs> How nice for us. And there we go. Easy peasy. No problem at all. But hey, Thor, look, you you, you said that this is the way to do it. And you, you proved that, hey, you can get through this last one. But you had an NPC. I mean, look at that NPC. She's still near full health and everything. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bonus here for those of you that may not be satisfied by that. And I'm going to complete this quest because I got it. Mm, I got it. Anyway, for those of you that weren't satisfied there, let's go do a solo run. Let's go do a, an Iron Scale. Iron Scale on Ultimate. As hard as it gets. As hard as it gets, guys. So we're going to go ahead and just pop everything on these guys. This first room, you don't even have to pop this much. I just want to I just want to put into uh I just want to make it clear if I can articulate myself, I just want to make it clear just how uh, just how much mana you're allowed to spend with this build and still get through everything. Now we're going to go just straight to the boss because, you know, going through the extra stuff, no real reason for it. Oh, oh there's a little guy over there. Oh well. Come on, grunts. So as you can see, lucky straight and uh, ducking upper really do a lot of damage. Chopping Hammer, too. That's why we level them. They're really, really powerful. Oh, this guy's still over here, isn't it? So we'll finish him off. No problem. Alright, so Scarbelly. A little, little note about him for you guys after we get through that is he likes to do this where after he takes us some damage he says don't hit me he ducks down to the ground and he throws out a uh, he throws out a a sleeping gas which will knock you to the ground if you stand near it put you to sleep and then you'll be at you'll be at his mercy and take a lot of damage so best thing to do is to try and bait that out with your exquisite combo and then once it's down you go in and you do a lot of damage because he only does it at certain health percents. So as long as you're uh, as long as you're careful about it, you won't have much issue. And done with you. Keep our strike buff up. It's really strong. And. As you can see, I've always got my Will Driver ready for the next room. Okay, so we got a Rock Solid Girl. That means she has extra physical defense. Oh, they throw Tridents. It's always good to try and duck away from those Tridents. They can inflict Bleed. Whoop. And getting hit with Bleed stinks, because then you have to waste a Cure on it, you know? And that's more mana down the drain. And if you take a look at how much mana we spent, we spent a lot already. So we're going to Painful Raptor, we're going to throw a heal down on ourselves, and let's go. And with these guys, it's pretty simple. Your basic auto attack combo is going to be useful against these guys. And you're not going to want to spend too much mana on them. I mean, exquisite combo, your ducking and swaying moves, those are perfectly fine to use, no problem. We're going to heal again. We're going to keep healing ourselves anytime it's up right now. Because you get a lot of uses of that when you level up slow heal. So we've got these guys all grouped together. Get that chopping hammer down, get the exquisite combo. A lot of damage down on them. Easy peasy, that's how you do it. That's how you do it, boys. 
and get our strike buff. So we're about to head into the boss. We're going to put another heal down on ourselves, and we're going to go in here, and we've got Commodore Cannon Hand as our boss, and luckily we've got a heal coming out. Oops, stepped on that tar. So, a note about Commodore Cannon Hand. He does what a lot of late game bosses do to Monk, which is he has a lot of super armor. And like right now, what he's doing, he super armors through your moves and does a lot of damage to you. See, look at that. Look how much damage I took there. That's just rude, sir. See it right there. Look at that. He did it again. Now, I'm going to teach you guys how to deal with that. Oh, for some reason it didn't go through. No problem. We'll just heal up a little bit. Play this a little bit safe. Like I said before, sometimes you've got yourself in a tough situation. It happens. It happens. You don't always have a perfect run, no matter how, how many times you may or may not have done it before. So, you throw out a twister, you run around a little bit, easy peasy. Now, that's a little bit boring though, so we'll go ahead and we'll finish this guy off now. And done. Easy peasy. But if you take a look, I got all the mana in the world left over for myself. Heck, I could have even gone with one less mana, one less painful rapture use if I wanted to. Uh, one thing I didn't quite show off was that to deal with Commodore Cannon Hand going for that super armor, the second you see him doing it, you throw out your smasher, you'll grab him and you throw him against the wall. Unfortunately, I mistimed my smasher, and instead of doing it when I was right next to it, I did it a little bit far away from him and I missed the grab. My bad there, guys. But hopefully this is helpful to all you wannabe monks out there, and hopefully this will get you through those later game dungeons where things might be a little bit difficult for you, help you deal with that super armor, and help you deal with those, those longer dungeons overall. So, I'll see you guys on the next video. If you like this one, be sure to check in the description below. I'll have more videos coming out. Give it a like. Ask for more videos. Ask me what you want to know about. I can show anything you want to know about Monk right now, and most things you want to know about other characters in DFOG. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Bye bye everybody.